I think this is probably the first time I'm going to say this like Tessa and me got blurred for me I have to say I was reaching the pits the you know rock bottom at the time and this was a movie that kind of took me out of it and so for me Pallavi was that boat so I leaned heavily on Pallavi's strength now what I didn't agree with is that Tessa wasn't actually in love with Charlie Tessa was in awe of Charlie and most of the time we'll debate ki Martin is like some love in your eyes I'm like admiration admiration I think it's <laughs> it's not love I don't believe boldness is something that's always there across the board for every, everyone that we see I think it comes at the right time when it needs to and then we are scared most of the other times in our lives I mean I am I know that a lot of people when they like see me cry sometimes on set you know some small thing might break from my hand and I cry and they're like we thought you were strong I'm like this is strong this is what I call strong there was part of the like you have of course worked with so many star actors that we celebrate today in India Tulkar Fahad Dhanush uh what do you think is that one thing that makes them who they are today or are they very different from each other Fahad oh my god Fahad and I I remember the one scene that we did have within 2 minutes of meeting each other we were discussing what our character signatures do look like like <laughs> wow. it was very very casually like what's manoj abraham sign this is samira sign <laughs> fine you go live your life you don't care about me doesn't mean i'm going to stop loving you because my love is not dependent on you seeing my love my love is because i love you no matter what that's all on me i am enjoying loving you who are you to tell me to stop I will leave you alone though like I'm not going to be the crazy stalker chick or anything I'll leave it, leave you alone but you don't get to tell me to stop loving you Hello everyone welcome to Filmco Pack Today we are here to discuss 15 years of the work of the national award winning actor Parvati Tiruvottu Parvati made her debut with the Malayalam film Out of Syllabus in 2006. From there on, she has never looked back. And alongside Malayalam cinema, she has worked in Tamil, Kannada, as well as Hindi movies, winning various awards and accolades for her works. She won the Kerala State Film Award for the Best Actor two times for her performances. She has also received the IFFI Best Actor Award at the 48th International Film Festival of India. and has been the recipient of the National Film Award as well. She has won several film fair awards for her various roles which she has portrayed. Today at Tinko Path we celebrate her work and her career of 15 years in cinema and what we can expect from her in the future as well. To celebrate this we have with us Ashwita from the YouTube channel I just react and review my partner in crime Arup and we have Parvati as well. Thank you Parvati for joining us today it's such a pleasure a uh, pleasure to host you and we know your busy schedule you took time out of it this is uh, really great thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Um so we are going to talk about our favorite performances and uh, talking about uh, your favorite performances let me start with the one uh, with which you won the national award uh, Samira from Take Off. Um it was such an interesting character with so so many shades of all of which you have portrayed in such a humane way. Like you play a wife, a mother, a personal a fighter and a survivor. If I may ask how did you balance to have all of these attributes together in this performance so that that one of the parts uh, does not overshadow the other it it, would, it wouldn't have been easy I feel Samira uh Samira Samira it comes for me it it starts everything starts from the back story of how the character came to me I think the preparation starts for me a lot lot, lot before than when you know you go on set uh not just when you actually have the script in hand like way before when maybe the first time the director calls you or the writer calls you and tells you there is this character i'm thinking about and you already kind of have the seed planted in your head and being the overthinker overfeeler that i am i i think i already start spinning stories about the character and like kind of preparing myself to be uh not to use like heavy duty jargon here but preparing myself to be the vessel that i'm supposed to be for the character to come in and sort of take form um samira for me was i mean was introduced to me first time when mahesh narayan uh called me and said there is this character that i'm thinking about but at the, that point she was not a nurse she was, the story for her was just simple it was like she's a mother uh, she's a wife 
uh she is trying to close some loans she is trying to juggle both uh you know this custody battle for her son and also at the same time there is another guy who is falling in love with her and the baseline for me what mahesh told me was that this is a woman who is constantly providing for or showing up for the validation that the men in her life are setting around for her like as as a father mother she was raised as someone who was eventually supposed to provide for them so she got a job and everything but she was busy paying the student loan off so that was the expectation from her as a daughter and then the ex husband expected her to not work be there like and only like you know and that and she tried to do that but she couldn't juggle both so she left the marriage and she came back to provide for her parents and now she has a son now she's also fallen in love with another man and she is going to have another child and now she is trying to deal with the expectation of her first son of how to be a mother and to hide her pregnancy and she kind of gets released from all this when the son actually the first son is actually in love with the idea of having a a sibling and she suddenly kind of realizes that maybe she didn't have to stick by these measures after all she could release herself so it's through her son that she kind of releases herself from all these um all these pillars around her all these cement structures around her that was boxing her in which was frustrating her so all these elements of her character her struggles were already in place and then a dear dear friend rajesh passed away the same year um in february uh 2016 i want to say um and then it was cra- it was crazy because immediately the idea was let's do a movie for rajesh and this was the first thought that mahesh had and then the production was put in place and he set samira's story in in this amazing milieu that you couldn't even think about like she's a nurse and these are all the nurses who were stuck in mosul and it's a real life story but it's all sort of sort of inspired by it and it just kind of merged so beautifully that i then it was hard for me to think of it as not as nurse samira you know um and yeah so because these elements that mahesh told me were already in place it was not at all hard for me to think of her as a mother wife uh nurse these are separate because these were already intertwined in the very first conversation we had so i think the base sort of structure was already in place and and everything else was new the fact that she was a nurse she was going to mosul um kunjako boven who plays my my new husband like what our relationship should be like how is she as a mother to her son what are her expectations from herself and i realized that she is a person like who always is is on a rush she, her speed is something like my issues is show me how fast she walks because it's always about when do i get to uh, you know make this much money when do i get to pay off this loan or when do i get to feed my son or see him or you know everything was based on what's the next goal and one of my favorite scenes is when she's talking on the phone about visa with one guy with a with a you know is a guy and she's closing the door and she's doing all of that and she's popping some pills and she's going to bed and it's so like routine for her is that she started taking these pills a while ago so that she can sleep so that she can work so she's been you know doubling her duties and everything so samira is someone who never really smiled yeah. you it's very hard to catch her smile much in the film and i personally i remember the time i had stopped smiling myself like i was constantly like this 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 knitted bro like that always like this um yeah interesting like yeah go ahead ask me some questions i'm just going on a yeah, reminiscent and, and path just, at this point i just wanted to say my favorite scene there's so many across the film but you know that last frame where you know they all get released and you are walking with your husband in any other film you know that would be a walk of glory but the way you do it feels like you know it, it's like another event and then there's another battle waiting and it does it takes out the glorification yeah. and it makes it so relatable Absolutely. i love that frame i love that scene i'm so glad you mentioned that because i think this is a conversation i think mahesh me and sanu all three of us have had is in most of the scenes where like the actual big release happens or the climax happens 
the character s- sort of shows the happiness the audience is supposed to feel but mm. for the character is it possible for them to look at themselves from a third point of view like that and be happy like oh i'm happy for myself like here she is she's pregnant she's about to pop and she's tired she's just released her her husband from being executed she just wants to sleep like yes. that's what we were thinking yeah. she would just love to get some clean clothes and sleep you know so that i i held on to that because if any other director or any other cameraman would be like oh she looks so tired or she let's give her a bit of a touch up because it's climax because mm-hmm. there are these points and i'm so glad that i got to work with people who'd never <sighs> ever you know come in the way of a character's actual you know arc how do you right. <laughs> sorry no yeah. that's amazing and it's it's really interesting that you said that before uh, you know the day of the shoot there's a whole prep that you do and you get into the head of the character so i want to talk about one of my favorite films which is charlie and okay. one might you know just think that oh this is like a very breezy romantic film where you have the male lead who is helping people when he's moving around then you have the female lead who is the free bird and she falls in love with a man whom she has never met but when i was watching this film and when when i looked at tessa uh i sort of wanted to be like her because i thought that it takes immense level of bravery a certain so- sense of bravery to follow your instinct and your gut uh to the point where you are probably you know willing to risk your sanity also and i yeah. felt personally that you and tessa at the core are probably the same person but that's what i felt i want to ask you do you feel like relatable to tessa's character are you like that and uh, yeah what was was it very relatable to portray her on screen i think this is probably the first time i'm going to say this like tessa and me got blurred <laughs> this is the first time that has happened like i remember reading the screenplay not reading the screenplay martin prakard narrated the screenplay to me and i to be honest in the very first go i was like eh, i don't want to do it like that's how i was in the beginning okay. and then like two days go by and then i was like no it's kind of growing on me uh, the the idea of it and the, the structure of it was starting to grow on me so i told martin that i would love to do the role but i remember asking Martin Prakash why is she following him why i want to know that like that's the main thing right for her and he's like dude i'm not good at explaining things i'm good at sh- showing things so let me so uh, we were in a hotel room so he took this 500 uh, ml uh, bisleri bottle and the one liter that i had in my hand and he put it he put it in front of me and said the 500 ml is tessa and the one liter is charlie she wants to be the one liter and i'm like that's the best explanation really like from 500 to like the basic thing is okay and i don't know now that it's been many years since the movie has come out one of the major issues or fights or let's not say arguments but like kind of debates that me and martin had also uniyar but uniyar is a, a peach of a person like he's the kind of guy who would be like if you're thinking that stick with it because it doesn't matter what i think because you're portraying her and stick with it right. because there's going to be magic when not everyone agrees on something now what i didn't agree with is that tessa wasn't actually in love with charlie tessa was in awe of charlie tessa was so most of the time i see movies in which the woman sees a man and she's immediately in love i'm like how does that happen like i mean they could get to know each other before you fall in love love like admiration i can understand awestruck i can understand inspired i can understand but are you going to say love like uh, so i me and martin prakard always used to debate that so if you notice there are scenes where um, Jembin Vinod's daughter asks uh, who are you to Charlie or then Saugen's right. character asks Chechi mm-hmm. uh, Saradara like who are you to him and there is a reaction shot and most of the time we'll debate ki Martin is like some love in your eyes I'm like admiration admiration I think it's <laughs> it's not love and whatever came out of my face like on my face was a mix of me and martin's debate that's okay. what that's so you'll never see me like drooling in love uh, of a man she's tessa has never seen or met but definitely awestruck with this life that this guy is leading right. this um, how do you untethered soul that he is and 
it's, it's a bonus in my head i'm like it's a bonus that they travel to go together in the end that they kind of like you know they're like together together but like usse pehle tak like i'm like please don't ship them yet they are two individual characters like let them have their own journey um so okay and about me and tessa i remember there were elements of who who's me because that's that's what martin prakar did right he didn't like tell me exactly what to perform he said tap into yourself and i was like that's what i don't want to do as an actor is not tap into myself like i want me to be the character that's when unni unniar would come in and have these conversations about tessa's background and all of that so all that was in place except i feel like it unlocked a certain untethering in me that was already in, already ongoing for me like before uh, charlie happened there were several of these really wild trips that i had done oh. solo trips that i had done so that part of me i had to go in and unlock those because that was what was expected of me so a lot of people are like oh my god parvati you've become like this i'm like i was already a tessa before i became a tessa so i'm like you never know which came first All it's right. kind of a mix at this point so i'm like Okay, fine, Tessa. You can coexist with me, and yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So you would have been okay if Charlie and Tessa at the end would have, you know, just oh, shake, shake it and then said, "Okay, bye. I met you." I no. would have been so happy. <laughs> I would have been so happy. No, I mean because I feel like this is already a path-breaking film in terms of mm. seeing a girl who is in her element. You know, yeah. she's someone who doesn't, who really thinks it's a great. choice to wear two different slippers i think that i really think that's a fashion choice and then i look around in this industry <laughs> where people are like no parvati you're not wearing that to an award function i think i wore dungarees to an award <laughs> function once and i don't think i even got clicked that much on 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 the awards they were like no we are not even carrying you on a magazine i'm like oh, like dungarees are so comfortable and so chic and like so my idea of style and i feel tessa's idea of style is very similar uh the no spin was not there in the beginning i was going in for my very first shot and we felt something was missing so the part that i kept feeling that i'm a lot me as tessa and that was bothering me uh and so that was not helping me perform yeah. so samira came in with this idea what about we give her a no spin and i was like i don't want the regular no spin i wish you know we we could wear like ring like the ring that goes in mm. inside and she's like but wait i have this thing and she comes around and she's using a small drill and god knows what she was doing and she came with this really giant metal piece and she's like what about this i'm like whoa that's awesome let's do this and martin prakar is like super convenient right like i mean he's like do what you think is wild is what we want and we went with it and i realized that was actually the button of a shirt and we were in trouble because if that falls off we have 50 days of shoot waiting so we had to hold on to this one was the most you know well kept item in the whole shoot was like this button shouldn't go off it's continuity let's keep to it so that was samira's little addition to keep like sort of take me away from me when i look in the mirror it's not just me entirely it changed the whole shape of my face yeah that kind of helps me when the alankar aspect of it when the costume and the makeup department helps me set, get into the character or sort of break out of me all right Okay, I'll jump into my favorite performance, and uh, this one is a Tamil film, uh, okay. Marian, where you play Pani Malar, <laughs> and you, you know it's like it has so many tropes of a conventional heroine as we have seen in our films, but she yeah. still stands apart like anything. And there's this one scene I wanted to talk about. Uh, you know, and near the end of the film, there's this um, sequence where Dhanush actually uh, gets off from the abductors. and uh, panimala actually realizes that and she keeps on telling she he's coming he's coming so tell me you know on paper that looks so unreal i mean uh, you know in any other lesser film it would be a very you know humorous scene maybe you know mm. she's telling he she's coming he's coming and all of that but you bring in such relatability so how do you do that where where there is a sequence which is not as inspiring from life but how do you make that relatability how do you make the audience you know feel with you and they also feel yeah this is something which might have happened right uh so that was one of the most difficult scenes for me in the film to do and i i used to dread it like i used to dread the day in the call sheet when you know it's coming and it's coming but what really helped me was living as panimalar 
breathing her her sassiness and her confidence all of that for at least a month before the the scene was taken and what also helps is when mark the cameraman is someone who probably was the first cameraman that i worked with who kept telling me forget the camera like i will capture you that's my job all you need to do is be in the moment and give us magic if i fail at capturing it that's my fault you don't have to position yourself so even as an actor and that was just like few years into the profession right i was still very stuck mm. on to coming to the point and catching the light and all of that and here's a cameraman who's saying forget i exist and he did a good job even like kind of becoming obliv- like he obliviates himself like you know you can't quite see the camera or him moving around all i needed to do do then was follow the lead of my director and be her and this is the kind of stuff that a lot of people listen to uh, and say oh my god she's so method but it is so method and it is what helped me be pani maler at the time like i have a lot more of hacks if you want to call it at this point in my life because i also know what it is like the kind of emotional and physical toll it takes on your body even oh, a scene later if you go into a space of trance and you are unable to shake off it and that kind of a trance doesn't just get shaken off maybe a day or two later it stays with you for years of physical trauma or a mental trauma even an imagined one can stay with you for years and i feel like the first 6 to 7 years of my profession i did not particularly take good care of myself to release myself from these fits that i would put myself into Mm-hmm. which if you ask me was it necessary i didn't know any better that's what i thought this is the only thing to do right now i don't know any hacks any tricks i never went to like a film school or acting school to do learn these things but all i learned was from actors talking about their craft uh, watching their work so and also for me it was very important to experience faith in that way faith in love like what panimala really taught me for me when i talk about these characters i talk about them as if they really really do exist so it's very hard for me to think of them as just a character i portrayed like soon after i portrayed it's like they exist in in some other land and they constantly help me be me i can learn a lot from them constantly so for her it was like against all hope against all kinds of certainties even the fact that even marian may not love her back for her mm-hmm. it's the confidence in herself and not letting go of her love for someone um just because they won't validate it like that was the first win for pani maler was fine you go live your life you don't care about me doesn't mean i'm going to stop loving you because my love is not dependent on you seeing my love my love is because i love you no matter what that's all on me i am enjoying loving you who are you to tell me to stop i will leave you alone though like i'm not going to be the crazy stalker chick or anything i'll leave you, leave you alone but you don't get to tell me to stop loving you so for me that was a major learning experience just embodying that emotion that certainty in self and then it's it's that that the whole thing that bala comes in with but bala comes in with he he comes and talks like this you know like this is how he talks like just go into that space in your mind in your heart where you know that none of the boundaries of time distance world nothing exists but the love and i believe that i truly just believed him like it for me it was like nothing else matters parvati doesn't matter realistic expectations doesn't matter what bala is telling me is what matters and mm. what you see in the scene is just me deep diving into that faith in what my director has shown and not questioning it one bit what i love again about this job is that there are moments of such free fall you don't know it could have gone wrong it could have gone mm. so wrong mm. and or it could go right i i think there were two takes for that i don't know which one he used i'm sure there were the, uh, i did it twice but i remember just before they started rolling i wasn't moving for a long time i don't know how long it felt like hours but i definitely was in one space because i was beaten up and everything so i was i was completely withered 
and from withering it was also an exercise on physical strength right like once you let yourself wither away and you you're one with the floor like all your weight is being taken by the floor and slowly as you're telling yourself he's coming he's there this is he's definitely coming and you're believing it it's like a step by step process not like ting you know <laughs> bulb goes on it's slow and steady as you build that your body needs to also wake up and as and your body might be slower than your mind so yes. like my leg was sleep asleep by that time i was dragging one of my foot and i knew i had to run in one general direction because mark didn't tell me where exactly to stop or anything because he knew that now there is no point in telling her directions she is directionless at this point so i think it just meant how much faith they had in me also and faith i had in myself which these days i wonder if i have that kind of bravery to do that uh, but yeah thank you for mentioning that scene you were so good and you did the dubbing as well right the tamil dubbing i did i did oh god it was supposed to be um uh, sing sound and but then it just was not possible with the loud noises everywhere and i started dubbing for two days and i was so such a defeatist i was like no i'm not getting this right there were certain nasal twangs of malayalam language that was coming into tamil and it was really affecting it and i could call constantly see bharat bala not being happy with that so i finally said you know what please call someone else like i i will happily give pani marar of to a lovely dubbing artist who will capture her essence i mean it will break my heart but i'm sure it's better than me destroying her and guess who came chinmay came chinmay yeah. came on to the dubbing location she's such a sweetheart she came she saw like two scenes she even tried dubbing it i was sitting inside the dub theater with her bawling of course because she was doing such a great job and i was like okay so this is what pani malar is going to sound and and then she turned around and said you know what you don't be lazy you get up and do it i'm not doing it and so like it's probably because of her saying no i will not do it that i got a second chance to do it and the fact that chinmay kind of helped me with a couple of like vocal exercises nasal exercises that i i think it took me 5 or 6 days to dub Okay. Who's the longest yeah. I took for a character? And you were so good. Why I tell that? Because when I first was looking for Marian, I got a Hindi version, you know, a Hindi oh. dubbed version with the subtitles on. But I was watching the film. I was getting the vibe, but I was not empathizing with the characters. And then oh. what I thought, I I always thought that you know, Marian, I have heard so much good about it. So what I did is I muted that version, and I was playing the Tamil version in my you know, I, I had the headphone playing the Tamil version, tried to sing so that the scenes go together. And then I got Pani Malar actually because oh that God. voice, the dubbing, you know, carried so much. And you Wait, were so that's really so cool. Good that. Thank you. I'm like that takes a lot of effort to like <laughs> press play and press play and like at the same time. Yeah. Cool. It did, but it, it was it was you know uh, it? it was that experience it brought it. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um I also wanted to talk about another uh, Tamil character which you've played uh, which is Shades of Panimala in it. It's a Tamilian character but in a Malayalam film and I believe one of the most authentic uh, Tamilian portrayals in Malayalam cinema. I'm talking about uh, Marathakam from City of God. Oh my god. And uh, I'm so Parati, happy you bring me. <laughs> really and <laughs> those scenes near the end when uh, Chembal Vinod's character appears and you're first scared of him and crouch inside on the bed and then later jump on him as he hits in the Superman's character that's that is really stuff of stuff of dream that's unbelievable <laughs> i i could never imagine something like that happening such rawness on the screen i wanted to ask you about your experience uh, for that scene and also your experience of working with lijo um how how did he want you to bring out that rawn and uh, rawness for the character and how he as a director is different from like other people so we have worked with oh god lijo do do i even have to say anything about lijo like i think his movies speak so much about who he is um lijo for me at the time i think it was again one of my very first films in malayalam it was his second film he had just mm. done naigan before that mm. and 
I remember taking the video of Nayakan and watching before I went to meet him. And it was Babu Janardhanan who wrote the screenplay. So it was Babu Janardhanan who narrated the script to me. Lijo was just sitting there and I kept wondering like, how is it going to be working with him? Because he doesn't like talk much. He's just there. And I'm glad that the writer is going to be on set because any of my doubts about the character, it can be, you know. But Lijo was my very first experience working with a director who wasn't like directing every move of me. he would only come and correct you if something is off so i had a lot of i felt like i i have a habit of um, contracting a lot because i i keep thinking i may overdo it i contract first like I'll really so he has to like slowly kind of thaw me out of that and um, he did that with paniwalar because sorry with uh, maradagam and again maradagam maragadam that's a, that's another thing because tamilians i believe they don't say maragadam they say maragadam and so there are there two ways to say the name so we were constantly confused what to call her but then we went with the malayalam version of it and the thing is we don't see boldness the way we see boldness i mean or some i don't believe boldness is something that's always there across the board for every everyone that we see i think it comes at the right time when it needs to and then we are scared most of the other times in our lives i mean i am I know that a lot of people when they like see me cry sometimes on set you know some small thing might break from my hand and I cry and they're like we thought you were strong I'm like this is strong this is what I call strong <laughs> because I I I can let go as well I can also be brave enough to be scared mm. Maradagam much like many other characters is making the best of her life she's left her son with her party she's come to a new place to like make a living so that she can bring the son like if you remember there's a scene where you know she's putting up her son's photo and it breaks and it's a bad omen and she yeah, like yeah, yeah, beats yeah. her head and she's crying and imagine parvati watching maradagam like do chill like i mean I, i have no way to connect to that but all you can do there is let go of any need for explanation connection whatever and just be her and i remember the only um Yeah the only preparation i could do was waking up at like 6 5:45 6 in the morning and going to the bus stops where most of the people who work in construction sites who are from uh, you know nagarkoil or tamil nadu they all are going to be like there waiting in their pristine sarees and like flowers and their lunch boxes and sitting and talking like with sleek hair and braided hair they look pakka you know and then once they get to the construction site they change into those really dirty shirts the long ones they finish work wash their face and they look exactly pristine as they were in the morning when they can get back home so these kind of things kind of interested me because i'm like this is what they do they wake up in the morning they shower they get ready getting ready is an important part of who they are for themselves so i started practicing those things and i started dressing up like her and taking autos and buses around and try, try to speak in tamil my tamil was not that great at the time and I remember an auto rickshaw driver really did take me for a construction worker girl trying to find her way through my my home street and he was telling me oh this is mamuti's house do you know and I'm like really I don't know that and he was like showing me the place around and I was like success you at least sold to one person that you are not you so I used to do those kind of things and um, this particular scene with uh, Chandan Vinod it's wild we were also shooting in Chalakudi and uh, in chalakudi that area there are like lots and lots of bars okay so you can imagine that's like in the evenings that's not a space where you would just want to be alone definitely not mm-hmm. but the, a lot of the public who were around were people coming out of the bars unhinged mm-hmm. you know totally in that element so shooting it shooting there in that lodge itself was quite a task for all of us to make sure that there isn't because there's indrajit and all of them like you know they are the other stars they want to see the stars and we thankfully were locked up in this room where this fight is happening and i hit him first and it was like some lazy slap or something and so lecho was like what are you doing <laughs> unleash you know and i'm like but where is that coming from she's scared and and then he said you know when you're scared is when your biggest blow comes like fear is the element that prompts you to do the most unexpected uh, largest blow comes from you when you're actually that scared like here is your 
ex-husband coming to take away all your dreams again like he owns you and you've just had a, a taste of what freedom is like to be loved is like and once you taste that it's like shark tasting blood you don't want to let go of it and you want to have a good life now for you the fear of losing this and the fear of this man as well that's what has to come and i remember the next thing i know i think i'm on the in the air <laughs> you know like <laughs> and then lijo was act happy so that is also me tapping into the element that exists in lijo you know so you'll see there is a lot of stuff that i do myself but in the end that last little kind of like that pull and throw happens when i have to like tap into my director's vision of it because mm-hmm. i might come to about 80% and then i just might be holding back and the last 20% of push happens when i just turn to my director and they are like go oh. i'm like okay yeah yeah so awesome really that was so awesome <laughs> so i feel then you know while we are talking about bravery and iconic roles i think the conversation would be incomplete if we don't talk about uh, the character of pallavi ravindran from oh yeah right God. that is again Super. one of my absolute favorite films and i probably don't have enough adjectives to explain how incredible your performance was in that movie <laughs> and uh, as a as a movie in the movie i feel that of course it tapped into a lot of topics like being in a toxic relationship then taking revenge by throwing acid and then the aftermath that the survivor has to endure and i'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been an easy task to portray this character because uh, it it is you know it takes a toll mentally also when you are portraying this yeah. character uh, you know in a uh, camera but i first wanted to ask you what is like the prep because you always said that you prepare a lot and mm. this particular uh, character i want to know what is the prep that you went through, uh, went through and how this character changed you personally also and what are, what is the hack that you used the, to get out of the headspace from this character because i i couldn't stop thinking about this movie for like a week probably after True. watching it wow thank you so much uh, ashmita how do i even get started um pallavi again the back backdrop of how the character came to me was around the time when i was being let's say massively attacked for having spoken up against a particular film and the misogynistic scenes in it and this was a time when like two of my other films had just released and a lot of the producers and a lot of filmmakers were not calling me anymore for films like it was the time when i could start noticing the silence in my phone uh, like starting to blare a little too much and that's when pvg the producer of my second movie notebook he called me and said my my daughters are planning to start up their own production company and you know we are looking for good subjects and if you find some good good story please let us know and then just behind the scenes it so happened that the story that bobby sanjay had written and manu manu again is someone who i had spoken to previously about some other project did not work out and it all kind of came together amongst them and it came to me as a project and for me i believe see i i understand that nothing can compare to what an acid attack survivor has gone through uh, but me as an actor i was trying i was trying to keep myself my head above the water i was trying to believe that work is still going to happen for me people are still going to believe that everything else is can be put aside and work and craft and acting these are things that are going to be taken seriously but i was just finding it really tough to stay with that faith and which is when this movie came to me and the fact that these producers were okay to take that risk at the time with a lead character and to see you know asif and jovino coming in which by the way is is still a big deal you know when these are actors who are lead actors who can make their own films who would be part of a movie where they have to play such this distinct characters like asif has to become gobind then tovino has mm-hmm. to be vishal and and for me that coming together in itself was i think sort of a redemption or some some kind of this like sudden a lot really like it was like you you know this is your reminder that nothing can go wrong if your heart is in the right space there are going to be people who are going to come to you and do movies and projects with you so for me i have to say i was reaching 
depicts the you know rock bottom at the time and this was a movie that kind of took me out of it and so for me pallavi was that boat so i leaned heavily on pallavi's strength so and then like of course keeping parvati aside to get into the character there was there were other kinds of prep that i had to do like i really wanted to visit shiro's in agra and i went over there and i met with the survivors who were running the cafe and spoke to them at length i asked them if it was okay for me to record the conversations just for me and for me it was you know it would sound so insensitive to ask them right at the uh, you know at the beginning of a conversation like that but for me nobody asks how it is for them under the sun to walk in in mm. in harsh sunlight uh, can they use regular soaps do they need specific uh, medicines on a daily basis or how many surgeries did they need do they need and how much does it cost and how do they take care of that cost and these are all very intimate details and don't get covered in 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 a newspaper paragraph article you don't ask these intimate details especially the first two weeks of recovering from something like this and and the mental trauma of it um and i think it's still hard for me uh to have sat there and listen to it and then to of course like sort of recount it at this point i mean obviously not letting uh, you know not going to talk about the actual stuff they were talking about because they said it in confidence but i was shocked at the uh, how do you, what's the word for it um they 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 just they they wouldn't give up mm. like these are these are not just um jilted lovers who did that i let me not even use the word lovers like these are not criminals who did that um these these were fathers you know brothers just because they you didn't agree to go to a particular place with them or wore a shorter sleeve one particular day while you go into the temple um or even to get rid of your family like an entire family who was uh, attacked like this was done by this this father who wanted to get away from not providing for them so the, he would rather you know kill the, the newborns and so there is a mother sitting there who's talking about the daughter who survived and the daughter who didn't survive and at this point she's not crying she's she's just talking about it as if it's it's another story but she doesn't leave any detail it's imprinted in her mm-hmm. and it it's also hard because after a point i stopped asking them any questions because i kind of realized that dude this is what everyone does to them they come to the cafe and they ask all these details so they are like a they like they like a studio take you know they just mm-hmm. say it all and is there any day they are people ask them about their favorite color or you know what's their favorite weather or what movies they like and i i kind of what what is it take for them to be treated as normal human beings without this being the only core center of every conversation so i guess one day of spending time with them was too many of too many introspection that happened also for me and i think what happened soon after that is i mean with the makeup that took about two and a half three hours minimum sometimes four hours i think that was the time i would like zone out and once i had the makeup on i actually never felt uncomfortable there were only times when the makeup people would be uncomfortable with things coming off but i never remember i, I don't remember complaining about this i don't know why that happened it's not like to say oh i was just like doing this as an as a I was honoring them or anything I genuinely was whenever I looked at the mirror uh, with the makeup on I didn't see anything different I don't know if that makes sense I didn't see anything different because I feel we are all bruised and and attacked in so many ways on a daily basis especially women that this is just that it's external right. and life goes on that element of the the women that I met It's like we are not giving up we will not stop existing you don't get to decide when i stop existing you don't get to decide what my that is so it's 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 hard to emulate it and so there were times when i would step out of the vanity and go to the location and there would be people who are not from the set who will see me and they'll immediately take their you know they look away or i'll see the shock in their face 
they can't recognize it's parvati walking by them or anything right like they don't know that it's it's unreal there is no like chata that my assistant is holding or anything and that is when you realize this is there on you mm. and so it's a lot of thought about how much are we reminding them of their scars than they themselves are aware of it you know they are unshackling it and we are putting it on they are unshackling it and they are putting it on so that i guess was one of my one of the biggest learnings for me and there's so much more i when i could speak for hours and hours on this movie what it was like to work with a great team who was just making sure that i had everything possible to just be in the moment i didn't have any more trouble like to be uncomfortable with like everyone was just there waiting to provide the right things at the right time so that i can do the best uh be it my co-actors my director cameraman the my focus puller like i always have this soft spot for the focus pullers uh because i i believe there is a particular uh collab the collaboration that happens between the focus pullers and the actors is just the cameraman and i have our understanding but the focus puller during my rehearsal might notice something i might do and he be like you're going to do that and he will catch it and it will be the good take and i'll be like you caught it thank you i was planning on doing that it's this telepathy for some reason so i i love my focus pullers all of them that i worked with so far i think i i i owe them a lot for catching certain moments of the magic which if if other people didn't care like that would have been lost and uh uh yeah when the movie released and i was not ready for the kind of Uh, responses that i got i was so not ready for it to resonate with so many people it continues to i still get dms so many dms and not just from women uh but but men who have been govind in their life it, that's the best actually when i get them like some of my relatives actually have come up to me and said that you know i didn't realize i was much of a govind with some of my girlfriends like So it's a great thing to realize things about yourself like this, right? Honestly, right. for me, it's a dream come true because when I had watched this movie, I said, "In life, even if I meet you for five minutes, I will ask about this movie and this character." So I'm so yeah, happy. This is universe realizing my dream. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I'm so happy. You know, and talking about team, I wanted to mention another performance where you were a team member, and that's Doctor Anu from Virus, and. Yeah. Uh, and i just wanted to know because you know these are films and you have done quite a few of them where you where you were actually a, one of the supporting cast an ensemble cast actually with a much lesser screen presence but what mm-hmm. i really notice about uh, dr annu is she you know in that limited screen presence also you bring an individuality of her own like i i completely figure out how she is not very comfortable while giving the presentation in your body language in the small yeah. gestures like she does not belong to that high official group yeah so how do you do that is there in a different you know preparation you have when you play smaller parts in these films um, does the preparation happen differently for you not at all actually so for me arup the thing is uh ensemble t- just doesn't matter like in my head like the scripting and other characters existing Uh, with all due respect and as much love i have for the characters and the screenplay for me once this shoot is on it's like it's like for us right we are the central characters of our own life so for anu she is the central character of the whole story like this story mm. is happening to mm. her for 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 her so instead of me acting as if i am adding to or i'm performing for or i'm here as a part of i was like what is anu's world like just let me just only talk about what is anu's world her husband's a doctor he can be uh, called in for these duties which you know she doesn't want to be away from him at the time she wants to be useful uh she has her children to look after uh, but at the same time anu's character is very much based on a real doctor a uh, you know a community medicine doctor and i didn't even know about community medicine before this this movie i didn't know that such a such a wing exists and the fact that most of the, re- the the doctors that we consider real doctors like the ones that who are you know with the stethoscope and like you know in the emergency room they cannot do much when it comes to an epidemic or a pandemic the ones who actually do the research and the investigation are the community medicine doctors so these guys can only you know 
treat the people with whatever information that can come from the community medicine sector and the community medicine sector works really in hand with the government so i knew much uh, i knew nothing about it and i remember meeting you know uh, the actual anu uh, dr anu and i remember asking her this and she was like you know she she would have been a different doctor she would have been in the pediatrics or some other section in the medicine in the medical field but she chose community medicine and for that one particular choice uh, she was you know she was kind of degraded around uh, be it her 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 you know her colleagues or you know distant related relations they were all looking down on her until nepa broke out and until mm. like she became the mm. investigative element and like many of her community medicine like colleagues became the the heroes you know so i mean for me that was also there was also a personal redemption happening for anu for a life where she's con- constantly questioning her worth she suddenly of value and she is doing her job right and so for me virus is about nipa virus and about so many people but the moment i think of it as she's one of the many characters i'm not even looking at her anymore so for me the only connection i need to have is with anu so for me it was like it's anu's world where everything else is happening that's how i mm-hmm. i i deal with an ensemble cast film or anything because that's i think that's how we are too i think everything right now this is live is or this recording is happening to me but from ashmita's point of view this is happening to her right. so right. like that's a that's the perspective shift it's that it. i continue to uh, you know take take it when you're not the protagonist and it's not an author backed role entirely you know why this is the kind of film in which every character is author backed Yeah. but then i just cannot stop me from asking you this and talking about team work what is the secret of the malayalam industry and what's <laughs> happening you know for the last <laughs> you know two decades or so because you know when we think about uh, making a list of the best in indian films of this year it's all malayalam and i mean when we make it and then we think should we do this uh, i mean uh, you know <laughs> just to be fair to the other industry but what's happening there which maybe the other industries are doing but not doing that great what do you think about this actually our subscribers uh, feel that we are impartial that we are partial towards malayalam cinema but we are very happy mean, to hear that <laughs> No no I understand this is like this is a question like obviously you guys have spoken to Smriti as well and like Smriti is someone who's also asked the same question and I I don't know for me it's the teamwork element of it is that I'm not saying there is no ego okay like there is enough <laughs> of ego but there is also such childlike joy like most of the the getting get togethers that we have ends up with at least four movies planned Oh. like like at least like there will be two people who will be talking about something it might be a joke a meme or something and suddenly there is a story that comes out of it and it's like you can pick and choose your people you are like oh you do the sound and you do the camera oh we can do this movie 30 days let's do it like and there is also the element of it having no need to prove into some kind of 100 crore club or 400 crore club like we are talking about making a movie in 30 days with maybe 2 crores max getting a good amount of money back and then having fun like making sure that the shoot is fun and once we are done with it we move on to the next it's almost like a very uh, you know it's a very clint eastwood thing like you know he's already making his next film while editing the you know previous kind of a thing i don't see any of the filmmakers and the kind of groups that they have the friends that they have ever there is no clinging on to a particular group but there's also such um comfort level with no matter whom you find in the group you know what i mean like you see mahesh and pradigaram or like uh, any of the new films like joji or you know you see these people sort of like one director in one movie is the actor in the other film and yeah, you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it kind of just there, there is such a i like the 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 lack of boundaries in there and there are definitely issues to deal with um but i guess there is a lot of joy and too much pleasure to actually outweigh any other issues that can happen and that's what i think i mean and it's one of the reasons i i, I really really enjoy working in malayalam too it's just it's very chill it, there isn't much of a hierarchy 
there is i will say there is enough patriarchy going around but i i wouldn't say there is uh, work wise hierarchical issues anymore mm-hmm. when i started acting i could see that a little more by the way when i was maybe what 17 18 when i started i could see that there were certain kinds of sectioning off of different departments and all but now it's kind of a blur so i guess that helps okay, okay. That's, okay. and that's the reason it's so easy for you like you suddenly play this you know this physical trainer in halal love story you know just yeah. a cameo but it's so it's so oh, beautiful it's it so is nice. so cool like wow. hasina again like it was two days of shoot and it wasn't even like a thought for me oh should i i remember like reading the story of halal and i was like wow this is the script it's about being part of the script it's not about yeah, you yeah. shining it's right. like you can shine on your own time but this is the time for the script to shine how can you add add to it so yeah, yeah. Also, uh, tell us, Parvati, like you have, of course, worked with so many star actors that we celebrate today in India: Dulkar, Fahad, Dhanush. Uh, what do you think is that one thing that makes them who they are today, or are they very different from each other? Uh, oh God! Oh, they are all from definitely different school of acting in terms of how they. I mean, I have not worked with Dulkar in a while, or Fahad in a while, and Fahad, I think, well. was just that one scene in take off but it was pretty good and um who else did you say sorry <laughs> like trying to think of the exact names <laughs> i said <laughs> sorry danish of course yeah see i believe that all of them uh, have very distinct styles like dulkar and i do not work on the same way like uh, he, he has different ways of approaching the character the way he became charlie was really amazing to watch him do that because i guess there is an element of i would say shyness in him like dulkar as dulkar i wouldn't know him personally that well but definitely was not a charli so for him to like keep breaking open during the the scenes to sort of you know encompass like the whole right. frame uh, unapologetically that was like interesting to watch him break into that and capture it and get it right and fahad oh my god fahad and i i remember the one scene that we did have within 2 minutes of meeting each other we were discussing what our character signatures do look like like <laughs> wow. it was very very casually we were like what's manoj abraham's sign this is samira's sign <laughs> so like i think uh, i wouldn't say the same but very similar in terms of wanting to get lost in the world of the character and then of course bring in your own elements and um, danush is danush 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 has when danush i believe truly believes in you know one man for all kind of a thing like he believes in setting it up from scratch working very like alone on his own kind of a person um he was probably the only actor i had very less conversations with like he barely spoke so imagine like that for such a film where like the okay, chemistry that's, that's between true. the main two actors is supposed to be like i think we be never spoke on set <laughs> so like on set like we are like like this and then on action we are like this and it's just crazy <laughs> but then i was i so i don't even remember much of the shoot like in terms of watching him perform but i remember watching him in dub, during dub and i was like there's a reason why he is the way he is i guess so it's very it's interesting right like different actors and their techniques are just right yeah it also puts you into positions where you have to find your own way um yeah And if we talk about the earlier generations, you have worked with Mohan Lal, Mamuti, Kamal Hasan. So, yeah. like, so they are all different. They are very different from how the, you or very. your peers work. Uh, no, I wouldn't say. See, this is where I feel I'm a little bit of an old school compared to most of my okay. peers at this point, because I still have, like, I still have. a bit of my attachment to certain old working styles like there are certain things that i would like to continue like for example like presence of mind and like wanting to stay in in you know in that character in that moment is something i still enjoy because i believe that if you get to a particular point and you don't let go of it you don't have to start from scratch to get to that point you get to build from there on and that is something that i particularly enjoy and i believe that i don't have the talent to like switch on and switch off like i need to con- consistently build it up i don't have that talent i've seen like nazria is a character actor who does that like she switches off and switches on like in no time i i find that to be very 
awe inspiring I, i i could never pull it off because i believe i would be the same in every film if i do that and uh i believe with mamuti he's he doesn't show the kind of breadth that he does he never shows it like it's very silent and then there are times i have seen him take that extra moment to make that slight minor adjustment in his facial expression knowing that it's going to be a close up and it makes all the difference and mm. and i like how open and like very i wouldn't say like he's he's a lot like a he's like a a student a child in a, in a room like in a classroom he's like how is that and he'll go and watch his own shot and he's like maybe i can do better and you know that kind of a that zest doesn't ever leave them you know that's one thing same as kamal hasan right like he would keep going and going and going until he gets the right shot with uttam avil and that was one thing i kept seeing unapologetically asking for as many takes as you want like i remember he did a great job ashwin did a great job i wasn't too sure and then he's like you want another shot do you don't you i'm like i do but i was sure if i can ask for another shot because you all seem so happy with yours and he's like never 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 not ask like that this is your one choice like you don't get to go home and once the movie release and like you're like damn i wish i had asked for another shot for that mm-hmm. so yeah stuff to learn okay now we have one last performance that we want to talk about because we all three love this film and that's bangalore days and when we were talking about malayalam cinema bangalore days has to come up I you must and your <laughs> character sara from bangalore days so now like sara as a character is extremely like she's grounded she's sorted she knows what she wants she's witty fun loving like there's a balance of everything in her i feel and yeah. uh, i said you played that character uh, having that perfect balance of being wild if i should put it that way and also having yeah. some sort of restraint so did anjali yeah. then like give you some specific cues to play that character uh she only uh... Yeah, we can have another whole interview with just talking on Delhi men and experiences, right? Like for me, oh, I, I for me, <laughs> the, uh, Bangalore days and Kude for me is like everything. It's, uh, be it Sophie or be it uh, you know uh, all kinds of. wonderful characters written for women comes from anjali and i'm like can i please play sara like sara is not a char- like she was not this version of sara when she first gave me the character okay. it was a whole other story whole other thing i guess anjali was the only director whom i met and i said you just call me for a movie and i'll come and act i don't want to know the story i don't want to know the character like that's how much i because i saw manjari kuru and i was blown away by it so um when she did give me sarah the present version that we have i remember her telling me that when you when people watch sarah it should almost be like an afterthought or like a much later thought that she is you know paraplegic right It, sh- it shouldn't. That shouldn't be the first mm. thing that you notice about her. Absolutely. And and I I wanted to I wanted to crack that. I wanted so, mm. and I also have to say like way before Sarah happened to me and to the people, I I was very aware of how much I smiled. I was not a big smiler. Like I was like this wow. controlled, like which is the right angle smile and all that. And Anjali is like. have you ever known what it is like to smile from the heart and i'm like no because i think every time i did smile or laugh like that i was always asked to tone it down and here is sarah who just lights up from her dive trip like right. <laughs> right so it was really hard for me to crack that actually actually being joyful on a show that she is running she she really loves her job right. i really didn't know how to laugh from from my core and to get this right from for a person who has gone through enough blows in her life where she is not seen as like she's seen as someone who is really cool in the group like she is the life of the party right. and then you see in what condition she is and that never stops us i mean it's kind it really does become an afterthought even for her friends or family that she has a condition everything else is just on point and for me that that became a great spot for me to start working backwards and creating her back story as as in when did she lose her father to what did she lose her father when did this condition begin how long was she on a manual wheelchair and how long was she on the electric one and so what is her physique going to be like so she has short hair style i remember once asking 
Anjali, what kind of makeup does she do? do? And Anjali is like, whatever is the most convenient, you know, I'm sure. Like, so she has this one slash of like an eyeliner thing that just does it. The fact that we decided to go with my glasses was one of the biggest challenges for me because I was like, it's my glasses. Like, it's not Sarah's glasses. Like, and then soon after I did the movie, I changed my glasses. It's hard for me to continue with a character's glasses. Like, I have to be like, it's mine. It has to be mine. Crazy. So Anjali, again, like I cannot talk about Anjali without talking about also Kude because Sophie, again, is such a dear character for me. Sophie, in fact, I think one of my favorite male characters written in Malayalam cinema is Joshua. Okay. Um, just the times when I think I, I wish it was written for me and I could have performed it. But I believe some of the most hard-hitting, softest, most powerfully soft characters are written by Anjali and I, I love that about her. Parvati, thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Uh, you. It, was, it was such a pleasure. And really, when you said that you are on a vacation and you still like w- wanted to do this, that's that's really that's so really gracious of you to come and do it. Thank you so much, yeah. Parvati. Really. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for those wonderful questions. And you guys have really picked and chosen the characters and not just the characters, but scenes that were interesting to you and have impacted you. Uh, I believe no matter what vacation I'm in, there's always this kind of that exploration, that kind of, you know, this at the beginning of our interview, uh, you were saying, you know, what is expected of me uh, in the future. And when that, uh, that was just actually mentioned at a go, like it was a fleeting second when I heard it. And I was like, it was a sudden like hammer on my head. I'm like, that is exactly why I'm on vacation trying to figure out like, (laughs) what should I be doing next? And uh, because I believe I've done a lot of hard-hitting characters, roles. It's taught me a lot about myself, the craft itself. But I have found myself in a in a in a pretty interesting interesting plateau. Like I'm I'm wanting to shake off from there and do something insanely different. But at the same time, it's hard once you have said. I was always the one who was wanting to break images. And now suddenly I think I have also built up an image of doing everything that is super intense, dramatic. And I'm like, I can do comedy too. I can fight. Uh, you, you are also working on your direction, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, how can I not talk about that? Very conveniently because I don't want to face that right now. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited about it. It's not announced yet uh, to what language it is. It's not Malayalam, surprisingly, even for me. Uh, I was planning my Malayalam directorial debut first. And then the story came from nowhere. And I was like, who are you guys? And it just kind of came together. So hopefully next year, mid next year, I should be starting shoot. So I'm also preparing. So wish me luck. Best of luck. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Lovely talking to you guys. Okay. Bye. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.